Hi, everybody. So this is going to be really fun. We are here to talk about the second in the 1980s series, uh, the uh, Kevin Sullivan, uh, Anna Green Gables series. This is Anna Green Gables' sequel, or sometimes called Anne of Avonlea. Uh, this is the second mini series to follow the original 1985. Uh, series that we already talked about in our last video and uh, so this one should be interesting to talk about and uh, my friend Amber is here and you want to say hi? Hi! <laughs> yeah, Amber's a, a huge Anna Green Gables fan and as well as I am but I think she's more familiar with the books than than even I am so this is gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah I'm probably more familiar with the books than Ella Montgomery. So. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Uh, so this, this, in this series, they decided to combine together three of her books into, they, they felt like Anne of Avonlea, the sequel to Anna Green Gables, didn't have enough sort of meat on the bones for some reason. And so they decided to combine three of her books, uh, Anne of Avonlea, Anne of Windy, Windy Poplars, and Anne of the Island. Correct. And uh, it's going to be interesting. I'm curious to know what you thought on a rewatch. But for me, on a rewatch, I felt like this didn't hold up all that well. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry. You no, no. There, there were parts that I, I liked. The parts that probably... The, the parts that they probably thought weren't meaty enough were probably the parts I liked. I liked the parts in Avonlea. I liked, I liked her and Gilbert's, you know, scenes together, those things. But most of the, particularly the middle section with the school, it doesn't hold up very well. Yeah. Um, and it was funny when I was watching it again, um, I actually remembered liking it a lot more than I did. Yeah, me too. And watching it again, I was like, what? in the world I, and it's funny all the parts that i was like oh i really like this part were parts that were true to the book just yeah. like pretty much straight from the book stuff that happened and then all the stuff where i was like oh my goodness come <laughs> on like i was yeah. legitimately bored yeah. during mm -hmm. like the last half but i but i was just like oh really this still and like all of the stuff that was adapted, but just straight up made up, I hated. And I, I don't think it's, yeah. I don't, I would like to see what someone who has never read the books thinks about the whole Morgan Harris plot line. <laughs> you don't think, you think they'd be swept off their feet by the, by the uh, romance? I don't like, I, okay. <laughs> Just watching it. I, was, I don't know if this is a good way to go into it, but I just have to say, just going into it, I was like, what universe am I supposed to plausibly believe that Anne, some girl who was neglected her whole life and like abused and just cast aside, would ever be like, oh yeah, you know who I want to date? The guy who neglected his daughter. Like, <laughs> What? That's so true. I just don't even understand it. And like, he's not nice to her. He's not funny. He's not particularly smart. And then like, he only starts being nice to his daughter when he's like, hey, this girl's cute. Like the whole yeah. time I was watching it as an adult now, like understanding human <laughs> beings, I was like, how do they even expect anyone to believe this is something that could happen? Yeah. Even in their Agreed. adaptation. Like, I just couldn't, I can't, I can't. Yeah. Well, and for me, the, I, I'm, I don't know. I guess I, I'm a, I, I'm a sucker for cheesy Nicholas Sparksian kind of romances. So I, I guess yes. I could have, I could have mm -hmm. tolerated that, but uh, the, 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 all the stuff with the, the girls in the school and stuff just felt like, to me, it felt like I was watching some show on the CW or something like that. <laughs> yeah, and the thing about that is, like, the people, okay, in Windy Poplars, because that's where the Summerside yeah. School is, um, in Windy Poplars, the girls are, you know, a little bit insubordinate and a little bit prima donna jerks, right? Yes, that happens. It's fine. But they're not straight up, like, 
let's just destroy her and beat her up. Like, they're, they're not, like, open rebellion jerks. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that is, I think, because they combined um, Jen Pringle with Anthony Pye from Avonlea School. And so it, it looks way worse on a 16-year-old girl, the things that an 11-year-old boy is doing. Right. And yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I it's agree. just I and the whole thing, like even the townspeople in Summerside, like they are a little bit resentful and clicky, but they are sneaky about it. I mean, not like sneaky, but like I, I said, yeah. they invite her to dinner, like as much as duty requires. They don't like shirk their duty, but they don't do anything extra. So it's well, it kind of turns Anne into sort of fairy godmother, where she's like, "All of this miserable people, ding! I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna charm you, and I'm gonna charm Catherine. I'm gonna charm Morgan Harris, neglectful of his daughter, Mrs. Harris, like whoever it is. Like nobody is immune from Anne's magic wand." <laughs> well, to be fair. In the books, basically no one's immune to Anne, but it's not just easy and whatever. Like, yeah, it's not and there's quite sometimes like there's sometimes in the books where she meddles. She because she meddles. That's that's the whole thing. She meddles in people's lives in a nice way, not in like a like what. There's some times where she meddles and she doesn't make things better on her first try and she's like oh crap i gotta fix this yeah and she's more of a flawed character like it's been a while since i read those future books but she just becomes a little almost manic pixie dream girl a little bit in this you know where she's just like uh perfect and can solve everyone's problems and and uh, all this stuff and so it it it's it, it i don't know it's just it's interesting so well let's talk about it in depth here so okay Okay. Uh, the well, it starts at the beginning uh, with her getting the baking powder, Rolling's reliable uh, baking powder uh, check from Diana submits yeah. it. And why do you think that Anne is so humiliated by this? Mm. Um. So I mean, in the books they do go into this, and I imagine that it's the same thing from the movies, and I I buy this. So, you know, Anne pours her heart and soul into Avril's atonement, and she's trying to get it published very seriously and trying to establish herself as a respected author and, and all that stuff. And then Diana, being so nice, being like, this is great. Let's publish this for here. I'll just change it a little bit. Uh -huh. And it gets published as, like, an advertisement, like – it's worse than being like trashy tabloid. <laughs> like, and I, I have, I've said, and I, I stand by this, that the way Anne feels about Avril's atonement being published for Rowling's reliable baking powder is probably the way Ellen Montgomery feels about the adaptation of Anne of Green Gables, the continuing story. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Which we're not going to do. No, we're not going to do. I'm not going to spend <laughs> whatever three hours of my life watching that thing. Uh, yeah, that's a very good comparison. I think that is true. Uh, that she would be a uh, rolling. She's probably rolling her grave about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it's so true. funny though. But the the whole thing plays very well in the in the movie. As like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, how funny. And she's so embarrassed, blah, blah, I feel like it plays well. And it's a good moment. And once again, it's something that's pretty much exactly adapted straight to from the book to the screen. It's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree, too. This this first part is probably my favorite part uh, of, the, uh, of this series or of this movie or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, uh, and it's, I think because... They not they well. First of all, it follows the book at least a, a bit yeah. in the first part, and it doesn't take itself so seriously, right? <laughs> because it's not afraid to have fun. And uh, most of the end books, I mean, the end books, they have deep moments. They have, you know, things that you can really learn and relate to, and all that. But overall, they're not trying to make you weep and re-examine your life in like. 
a broody sort of melancholy way. Yeah. But they're, they're mostly fun. Right. But I think that sometimes, I, I guess those everyday sort of experiences, I think sometimes can make you think about your life more than, than the, uh, the big melodramatic stuff. Like thinking about, do I have, do I deal with jealousy? Do I deal with, do I, res, am I resistant to change? Am I like all these different things that Anne deals with, I, I make her so relatable. And so, uh, something that you want to keep reading, you know, as opposed to this, this melodrama, uh, that, that people think is more compelling, but I yeah. think it is. I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. So uh, that kind of goes into my next question was, why do you think Anne is so resistant to change? She doesn't want Diana to get engaged. She doesn't want anything to change with her and Gilbert. She doesn't want anything to change in her life. I think that's pretty much um, everybody. (laughs) The history of the universe doesn't like change. Um, But I do think that, um, you know, in... Avonlea with the people she's around she's really found home and security which Mm -hmm. she didn't have for a long time um so I think that's probably part of the reason why she's resistant to change as far as why she doesn't want things to change with Gilbert it's because she's an idiot and in denial and has imagined something that doesn't really exist or isn't really what you want but whatever because she's pretty rude to Diana she is um and it's actually it's rude yeah it's rude in the movie and i don't like that because she's never rude to diana in the books Mm -hmm. she would never she would never that's part of the problem that i have with this movie and especially the continuing story is and and not just Anne with a lot of the characters i feel like they are making them do things that are not true to their characters that wouldn't be something that they would do to relationships that they have. Um, so like, I don't think that Anne would ever say something that spiteful and rude to Diana. She does yeah. in that movie, in the movie. I was, it is not nice. <laughs> right. And she says, really oh, I'm just bad. teasing, but. Yeah. Anne would, still... Anne would, Anne would not do that to her, to Diana. She just wouldn't. Yeah. That's just not the kind of person Anne is, even if she's angry she wouldn't do that to diana Mm -hmm. i I mean i can i can relate a little bit to the you know when somebody gets engaged uh, that i'm really close to and it's just like oh it's never gonna be the same you know you're sort of resistant of that change but i i think you you know you gotta suck it up yeah i agree um and it's interesting in the book she's less upset that Diana is engaged. I mean, at least she she presents it as she's not upset that Diana's engaged. She's upset that Diana's settling for Fred, and you know, and Fred doesn't live up to what Diana's ideal was when they mm. were eleven. And Anne's just holding on to that, thinking that it's right. Well, that's true. Oh, There's and- that great scene between her and Marilla, where you know she says, "Don't let this." this uh, fantasy that you built up for yourself, like rob you of actual real relationships. Yeah. And that, that is, um, that's actually a line that Diana says to Anne in the books Mm -hmm. in Anne of the Island, um, as they're getting ready for Diana's wedding, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm not positive, but it's, it's such a good thing. And like my whole life I've been like, that's right. Don't, like you're not probably going to marry Christopher Reeves. Like <laughs> it's just probably not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's your so that's your a paragon. Your your. I mean, <laughs> right? I love it. Is there anyone better than Christopher Reeves? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, all right. So yeah, I I think it, it makes. It, it, like we were talking about you want a character that has some flaws and and i i think that we do get that in this first part with Anne. you know like she's she is kind of petty and she's kind of foolish and she's so you do get some of that and i think that that works pretty well you know they they might carry it a little bit too far but i think in general it works pretty good and and i think that you also have to consider the fact that she was somebody who like those wounds of childhood 
stay with you for for a long time and she hasn't been at the green gables really that long when you think about yeah. it and so the i i don't know i can see why you'd be extra resistant to change if uh you know you had had this horrible childhood yeah and and i'm not i don't i don't i don't hate on ann for like not wanting things to change and that mm -hmm. sort of stuff so I'm, i mean yeah. i'm fine with that portion of it mm -hmm. um yeah I, like the the first the first third yeah of the movie i love i was like this oh he was like oh maybe it's great maybe i'm right and then it, yeah so do you find the incident, <laughs> do you find the incident with the cow amusing did you like that yes yeah the, incident, the, the cow is so funny she sells and, rachel lynn's cow <laughs> yeah and it's so funny in the books it's hilarious and it sets us up for it's like a meet cute basically for how she we end up meeting mr harrison um which will whatever he's amazing <laughs> but it's I mean, I guess they couldn't have everything from the books. It's fine. <laughs> but um, it's so funny. The whole situation of chasing the cow, selling the cow. What? <laughs> it's not that cow. It's so funny. It's yeah, never she, not funny. Yeah. When she goes outside and she sees the cow still in the... <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> it's so funny. Ugh. And Marilla's like, you'll be the death of me, child. <laughs> so good oh my gosh it's so funny i can relate to things like that because i i am i am kind of impulsive i guess in a certain way like i hate i i, I get anxiety with like spur of the moment things but sometimes i i don't necessarily think things through a hundred percent like yes. if that makes sense uh like i could totally picture myself selling the cow like i i think i would do the same thing <laughs> It would be, it's so funny uh because and it's, it's it's not like even absurd like it's hilarious and normally you'd yeah. be like they sold someone else the wrong cow would be absurd and you yeah. wouldn't buy it but the way it's developed the way it's set up it's so clever and so funny yeah and it's I, like i don't know like my parents will spend literally six months to a year looking through wallpaper books like trying to decide what wallpaper or paint or whatever to get and me i'm like Okay, that one. That's the one I like. I, I just, I'm very, like, I just make a decision sometimes. And most yes. of the time that serves me well. But other times I, I think I would end up selling the, the neighbor's cow. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Um, okay. So what did you think of Gil's, Gilbert's advice? The old write what you know. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's so, I'm, I, <laughs> What's with adaptations trying to turn Anna Green Gables into Little Women? Yeah. Like, because that's not in the book. She doesn't right. write Anna of Green Gables in the books. That's some, that's just, they just made that up. Hooray. She's now Josephine March. Like, who's great. We love Joe March, but also, like, uh, right. <laughs> she's not Josephine March. Anyway. I mean, it's fine, I guess. I don't hate it, but I'm also like, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can feel at least about that change, that that is something that Gilbert would say, and that is something that Anne would do and would be good at. But that's not something that Anne does, so... Yeah, I mean, I feel like it is a, a huge cliche that write what you know or whatever, and... and, and sometimes that is good and it, but it's not a hard and fast rule that like writing what you know makes you a better writer <laughs> yeah and, you know i don't i don't understand a lot of the changes i don't understand even why it exists as as even like a plot device well i think like it, it shows that Anne. what they were i think what they were trying to do is it shows that Anne is very uh unwilling to hear any kind of criticism or critique or whatever True. and then yeah. like by the end she like knows her heart and she's written this book to kind of she's followed his advice and she like knows like it shows this like, like coming all the way like full circle sort of a thing but i don't think that you necessarily 
need I don't needed it. I don't think you needed to 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 grab onto that cliche. Yeah, I don't I'll be fair. I don't hate it, but yeah. I really don't love it. Right. <laughs> I, it feels unnecessary to me and pointless, but yeah. it is there. There you and it's, go. Yeah. And it's not something that I feel is out of character. The things that I hate are things that I feel character. are out of character. Right. I agree. I, I, I think that it does sort of show her pride uh, that she has, which is in her character. Like we see whenever her pride is wounded, she she's very... Uh, kind of dramatic about it so it sort of works yeah. on that level but but yeah it, it definitely does have a uh uh what is 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 gilbert blythe now uh uh, uh Lori? <laughs> he's like Lori friedrich yeah. and i'm like uh okay <laughs> fine oh. i hate it so I, <laughs> so and totally friend zones uh gilbert uh yes oh no, i'm just we're just chums we're just how stupid is she come on like she's really so <laughs> stupid and this is fine because she's so stupid in the books yeah however i do have to say and i'm gonna put this in here right now um the thing that i am the most sad about no a thing i am very sad that they didn't adapt and include is Anne's first proposal because we don't even get that we just go straight mm -hmm. to gilbert but Anne's first proposal is, do you remember this from the books? No, it's, completely so Anne goes and stays with Jane Andrews, and while they are in bed getting, like, asleep, basically, Jane's like, are you awake? And Anne's like, sure. And Jane's like, do you want to marry my brother? He told me to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, what? No? And it's so funny like <laughs> that is really funny i completely forgot about that <laughs> and, and the thing of that the books really do um a, they just constantly left and right at in Anne of the island at least Anne of the island is Anne's expectations for these grand romantic things to happen to her and them just being brought down to earth real fast over and over and over yeah until she finally understands like i don't need you know marble hall sunburst, sunburst. <laughs> yes. sunburst and marble hall. until she yeah. realizes that they, she doesn't need that in her life well um, and it's weird because in this one it's almost as if she is saying that gilbert needs those things that oh I'm I couldn't be the wife that you want to be me to be yeah I couldn't be the and and I again I don't remember the books well enough that her refusal to him but I don't remember it that way she in the books it's so sad um so the first time because when I was little when I was like eleven or whatever maybe I don't know the first time I ever read Anne of the Island. I was in junior high reading it in the cafeteria yeah. at lunch <laughs> when I read the chapter Gilbert Speaks. I was sobbing. I wasn't even embarrassed because I was so heartbroken that she broke Gilbert's heart so badly. And it's just so, it's so sad because yeah. they're both completely miserable. He's like, he, I mean, they do a good job. In that the was movie, my I favorite guess. Anna Green Gables book for a long time, Anna the Island. I it's love that book. Still, maybe my favorite. I mean, yeah. I, I love Rilla of Ingleside. I, whatever. I love them all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just changes basically. I'm like, oh, the one I'm reading <laughs> at the moment, that's my favorite. Yeah. Um, but it's so it's so sad to me because when Anne refuses Gilbert in such a profound and sure way, and he says like, Oh, you know, I don't, it's just, it's so sad. <laughs> um, it, it completely breaks his heart. Like yeah. in the books, they talk about how he's gone completely pale and um, she can't even look at him because she can't handle seeing him like that. And like being un physically unable to look at him because it makes your heart so sad to see him look like that should be your 
not first clue because you've had a lot more, but your first clue that you love him. Yeah. And she's so stupid. And uh. it's so sad. And she basically is just like, you're, you're not, I don't love you like that, but let's be best friends. Okay. And he's like, I can't be satisfied with your friendship. Yeah. It's, yeah, and, you know, he says, you will, because she claims, oh, I'm not going to get married, and she, you know, he, he calls her bluff on that, like, of course, you, you will, you'll fall in love with some, some guy, somewhere, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, and in, the, I, I guess, maybe, it's just tone, probably, but in the books, he does say that, too. Um, in the movie, it kind of sounds like he's, like, accusing her and being, I feel like a little bit, like, yeah, that's true. sassy and rude. In the books, he's just like, you will, I'll be alone forever, but you will find love. Like, but not that way. Like, not Why self-pityingly. Do she does refuse him. She's just afraid or she's just insecure or. I think she's straight up convinced herself, like everyone says. I think she really did convince herself. That what she felt for Gilbert was just friendship and that love was something more passionate and wonderful. And Gilbert didn't look like the person she thought she would fall in love with. So obviously it's not who she'd <laughs> fall in love with. Yeah. She, I, like, basically she's like, I'm not going to pull a Diana and marry a Fred Wright, okay? <laughs> I do like in, in this, I can't remember if it's in the book, when she says there's a moment of revelation in every person's life. Yeah, the book of revelation. Yeah, the chapter revelation. where Anne has her book of revelation <laughs> is called A Book of Revelation. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great, that's really good. Really good. So, all right. Yeah, so Anne can be pretty frustrating. So then we get to the school. Yeah. And Gilbert goes off to medical school and, uh, or whatever. And, uh, and then Anne goes. To and then the, the rails just come off the <laughs> ship and. <laughs> do. So you've got this, uh, these girls that they are like a total nightmare. Like there's these sequences of pranks and there's a snake and there's a, uh, the, like there's a scene where <laughs> they're doing the whole, uh, uh, tying the um, sheets together to create the thing to get out the window and they're like they're trying to get the bike back and yeah like, and like, it's just so oh my gosh it's just everything about it is ridiculous like why is Anne a very respectable person at that school going into hijinks with some 15 year olds like yeah. however old Emmeline and her friend are supposed to be like what in the world I just don't get it I hate it well, I really and, do and the idea that like so let's just say the bike for example so she she puts the the bike into the shed uh, and it's the girl's brother's bike and Catherine is supposed to be so sort of uh, ruled by these and the school is so ruled by these parents and the idea that a parent wouldn't just call and be like give my son back his bike you know or kind of a thing like that i don't know, just the idea that it would come to this is so ridiculous and well and, and not only that what was their plan to <laughs> steal it and then Catherine would be like uh did you steal the bike and they'd be like oh no must have been the gardener like what? Well, and the I, fact that, that, that Catherine is so willing to believe the girls over, and, and there's like multiple witnesses, not even just, it's not even just that she believes the girls over Anne. There's like two girls who witness the fact that, that what they did. And, and yet she's, you know, so she's, she's, she's just like a crazy, insane, uh, evil person until Anne sprinkles her pixie dust on her and she becomes nice at the end. Yeah, it's so the whole thing is so crazy. Uh, yeah. the, the, this is where I just can't with this movie. I know there's like still maybe some parts people like, but this is when I go, oh right, the show's terrible. I remember. Yeah, and it's, it's pretty just, bad. I agree. Because even the things that are from the book or that would happen in the book. Everything is a caricature and an exaggeration and 
unbelievable to me. I just yeah. can't believe that any people on earth <laughs> exist in that way, reacting to each other that way. Yeah. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't ring true to me, especially in that day and age. Like, I just can't. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the, and, and like Jen Pringle, she looks like she like wandered off of a horror movie set. Like she looks so weird. <laughs> like just it's like so, so ashen so face and the way she talks is so weird. Like, I, I don't know. I, oh, I, right? The way she talks also. The way Emmeline talks. Where did they go to learn how to speak? Like Jen's like, excuse me, I'm there. And then Emmeline's like, I, but, 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 but. like I don't even know I kept losing words that Emmeline Vance was saying because she just like went into some quiet like it's like she was talking while breathing in well and there's something. some stuff that just doesn't make sense like why would he have an issue with her having glasses yeah like, <laughs> like what? what is wrong with that like since what on earth was having gl- since when was having glasses a bad thing <laughs> like I know I've made people like nerds or whatever but he's not gonna be like don't wear your glasses around your school, you <laughs> glasses-wearing fiend. Yeah, like, and so like, weird. Like, what could possibly be scandalous? It's not like it's, like, I don't know, she wanted to wear lipstick or something like that. Like, she didn't wear glasses. Like, yeah, and, like, <laughs> I mean, I could understand being, like, you broke your glasses. Oh, those are expensive. But, like, being, like, you're wearing your glasses? You want to be able to see stuff? What the heck? I just can't. Yeah. I hate Morgan Harris. I hate him. There. I said yeah, it. He's so, yeah, he's really bad. Really, really bad. And it's also really cheesy the way that he, like, appears throughout the movie to, like, I don't know, like, he's the there. Stock there. Anne. Yeah, he's, he's, like, there at the beginning to help her pick up her manuscript. And then he's, like, there. Uh, she almost crashes into him at the wedding. And, you know, it's, like... Oh. It's so it's so frustrating too because also like the reason why Emmeline and Jen Pringle get into like a freaking fist fight is because Jen's like your dad's a philanderer <laughs> and she's like how dare you bap bap fight 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 and then the fight's over and she's like the worst thing is she's right what she said about my dad is true what she said about my dad is true and this is the person we're supposed to expect and to yeah. have fallen in love with yeah i can't believe <laughs> expect me to believe this so so what did you think of mrs harris um uh, did you get any- oh she is amazing <laughs> i love mrs harris she's the saving grace for me yeah. But, I mean, she's not true to necessarily really any one character from the book. She's sort of an amalgam of a few characters, but she's hilarious. I love her. And she was, let me see her name. Um, do, 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 let's see here. Not Pauline. Where is it? Um... Uh, Jack, is it Jacqueline? No, that's Harrison. Oh, I can't find it. Anyway, she was a, a, a well-known actress. And, oh, here, Wendy Hiller was her name. Mm-hmm. Margaret Harris. Sure. Okay. Yeah, and so anyway, she was a, a well-known actress. I think she might even be a dame, maybe? I'm not sure. Uh, if but. she wasn't a dame, she should be made a dame. <laughs> She's so good yeah she's good she's, this is the only reason why i did not fast forward through the parts with morgan harris because i was like yeah. you know what <laughs> at least his mom is hilarious <laughs> but like you could easily like re-edit this into a horror movie because uh, not only jen pringle belongs in a horror movie but <laughs> like what she does to her daughter it's like the worst thing ever like she's so mean to pauline and pauline like is so afraid of her mother and like weeping at like everything and like terrified to even talk to her own mother and like <laughs> she doesn't want to go she she like is basically a slave she won't go to this party she won't like which from all intents and purposes is isn't even like overnight it's just like a a day and she has like one dress that she's allowed to wear and like like it's pretty intense like oh my gosh this woman yeah and 
the Pauline girl in the books. Like, there is a Pauline in the books whose mom is like, uh, take care of me, never leave, whatever. But it's not like, take care of me or I'll kill you in your sleep. It's like, she's, it's just, the mom's a bully, but not like physically. She's just like an emotional bully and knows what strings to pull. Yeah. And then the daughter is like, well, I'll just acquiesce to my mother. And I mean, I think that's what they were trying to actually go for in the movie is that Mrs. Harris was just such a dominant personality and Pauline was so submissive. And then finally at the end, Mrs. Harris is happy because Pauline grew a backbone or something, um, which is an arc sort of thing that happens in the books. No, she the really, she just, Mrs. Harris just dies. I know. They don't even give us the payoff. Like, she's <laughs> like, oh, I wondered if she would say yes to him. Good. Like, that's all she really does. Yeah. And she's amazing at it. But, like, <laughs> I think that's what they were trying to accomplish. Yeah. And I feel like the only reason why I, like, get that is because I'm informed by what happens in the book. So where they actually explain, like, that's the arc that happens. And, like, because there's a few characters who have a kind of similar thing where they are, like, the child and their parent is the only person alive and that they're taking care of their parent. And because they're with their parent, they can't get married, basically, is, like, yeah. a lot of them. So, like, Ludovic Speed and Mr. Douglas and Pauline. And, like, these are just some of the characters from the books who, like, have sort of this kind of thing um <laughs> but yeah she's so like funny. saddest life ever like it's like so bad she 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 can't like talk she can't like open the windows she can't like do anything <laughs> and the thing that you're supposed to get from that i think is like mrs harris doesn't want pauline's life to get ruined and so she bullies her and then over time it just got worse and because Pauline wouldn't stand up to Mrs. Harris, that was the thing. Yeah. And then finally she does blah, blah, blah. Well, it and doesn't read very also, well. And it's, it's also another chance to show Anne's pixie dust. You know, yeah. she makes everything better and everything right. And, and everybody, you know, listens to her and, and all that. And it's the best part, the absolute best part of the whole Summerside thing. And it's because it's from the book is when she gives... Mrs. Harris, the journals, <laughs> and Mrs. Harris is like, don't tell anyone that my husband was a cannibal, <laughs> and it's so funny. Yeah, and I never it, dreamed of telling anybody you're a cannibal. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. It's so good, and once again, it's because Ella Montgomery wrote that part. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So, yeah, then you have this whole benefit concert, and she ends up tutoring Emmeline, and then she goes to Boston. This all this Ugh. happens. <laughs> Anne would never dream of going to Boston. <laughs> Mrs. Rachel Lind, who's basically like Anne's aunt also, because they're like so good friends, and right. at this point in Anne's life, like... Mrs. Rachel Lynn lives at Green Gables and is taking care of Davy and, Do Davy and Dora. And they're like great friends. And Mrs. Lynn's nicer than she is in the movies, blah, blah, blah. Mrs. Lynn would die, straight up die, if Anne went to Boston. She's well, like especially mad. with these people that she's just barely met, too. Like, yeah, and I mean, it's because the whole thing is because Emmeline Vance, who I can't, I can't handle. I'm sorry, I can't. And it's because her character is like, bipolar but like maybe just like schizophrenic because she i can't follow her progression or her storyline at all and it's because she's like five different characters yeah, she's that's basically true. like all of the characters of every student that Anne ever connects with and not even students like little elizabeth next door all these people just smushed you know. into one and like they just pick and chose things. And I don't well, feel and like you they feel all like align. Really bad because, like, when she refuses, uh, it doesn't make sense when she really when it doesn't make sense when she refuses uh, Morgan Harris because she's just been all like jealous and and uh, you know upset with him for not taking him to the party or taking her okay. to the party. And so it doesn't really make sense that she refuses him. And and then like you feel bad because basically like 
Emmeline is without a mother again. And yeah, and it's like, it's so ridiculous. Okay, I need to just complain about the proposal. <laughs> yeah. So, he's, like, he takes this other lady to the ball. He takes this other lady to the ball. <laughs> and it's a business he has, trip or whatever. Whatever. He has a freaking date. And he's <laughs> like, oh, no, she's dancing with the guy from Kids in the Hall. I guess I better lock that down. And he's like, hey, let's get married. And she's like, um... Actually, no. Even and I'm like, jealous right? all like the whole day. It's so stupid, and it's so funny too. Also, because she refuses him, and then like ten seconds later, his mom's dead, and like yeah. that's the end of their story. Like, yeah, it is. What? Like you don't see her like writing letters to Emmeline, or you know what I mean, like some kind of continuing relationship at all. It's like. Sorry, she. <laughs> sorry, sorry she, your cool grandma's dead. Have fun with your poor father. Yeah. Like, I hate it. I, I hate it. And, like, what? And it's so, like, how would she even want to marry some guy? Like, she overhears Mrs. Harris having the conversation with Morgan Harris about taking Emmeline with him. She's like, you need to take care of your daughter. And he's like, I don't really want to. Why don't you just take care of her? And she's like, well, I've been doing it for so long. You take care of her. And, like, it's supposed to be like, oh, how sad for Emmeline that she's being pushed around. But also, at the same time, we're supposed to buy into the fact that Anne's falling in love with that schmo? I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Agreed. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And uh, I don't know. Even on, I guess... You could have, like, if you really sort of turned off your brain and maybe you could have fun with it, but it just, I don't know. It just doesn't work with our character and who, I don't want that in an Anna Green Gable story. I don't want to turn off your brain. Sorry. No, and also I need to complain because of the Christine thing, because frankly, Gilbert would never, never have proposed to Christine right. Yeah. Or even courted Christine while he was still in love with Anne. Yeah. Like, he would maybe, like, try to date someone or try to build an interest in someone. I believe that. I believe it. I believe he would try to get over her. But no way would Gilbert be like, hey, girl, I'm sort of in love with this other girl, but, like, let me just use you to move on with my life. Cool. Like, that's not Gilbert. Right. Gilbert's not a jerk. That's definitely a Morgan Harris thing to do, but that's not a Gilbert thing to do. I hate when he's engaged to Christine. I was like, what? I had forgotten that happened. I was like, are you kidding me? This yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah, I agree. Ugh. I agree. It is pretty bad. And, and you do get that whole sort of, I don't know, Victorian, like, I'm, I'm, I'm dying from a broken heart. Oh, you know, kind of a thing, which uh, it does sort of happen in the book, but still it's, it's played up even more, I think, here. Well, I mean, he's but, not dying of a broken heart. He's, like, dying because he got <laughs> sick at the hospital. Like, it's One in the same, tongue. let's be honest. He's kind of dying <laughs> of a broken heart. He gets better. <laughs> he gets better because... Anyway, okay, so... Wait, no. I got to rewind you back. Okay. In the books. So, like, they, and even in the books, like, in the movies, they're like, we never see Gilbert at all again. The relationship is completely over once he rejects her. In the book, Gilbert is, like, nice to Anne. He, like, yeah. still hangs out with their circle of friends. And he, like, well, he, he, doesn't he doesn't go off a letter saying, oh, you, you did the, because he comes and sees her in this. And he's like, I understand what you were saying last, you know. And he's like, uh, yeah. Well, that's because they made him engaged to Christine, which is garbage. <laughs> um, so what happens in the books is like, so he just goes on being her friend and he's nice to her. Um, but she meets Royal Gardner, who I would believe she be is in love with. Not mm -hmm. like real love, but like pretend mad imaginary love with mm -hmm. Royal Gardner. I believe that. <laughs> and Gilbert, because she's off with, because Anne's off with Royal Gardner, he ends up Spoiler alert for anyone who's reading the book. Spoiler alert. <laughs> he um, spends a lot of time. He literally with Christine, but the whole time he's with Christine, with Christine, 
He's just escorting her to dances and things and functions. But she's engaged to some other guy, and he's just her friend's little sister. And he's just, like, keeping an eye on her and taking care of her. And neither of them care that people think that they're a couple because Gilbert's not trying to get with anyone because he's heartbroken about Anne. Right. And he's just trying to live his life. And Christine's not worried about it because she has a fiance. Mm -hmm. So she's not wanting anybody else to go after her. Well, I think they were were trying to create the Royal Gardener thing with Morgan Harris, but... (sighs) Yeah, Yeah, of course we were trying to create Royal Gardener with Morgan Harris. Oh, man. So, I do think that it's a well-written scene and well-acted. The scene between Catherine and uh, and Anne, when Catherine talks about uh, growing up as an orphan and, uh, and, you know, that basically saying, like, do you think I want to be this way? Do you think I want to live this life? And that she sort of feels like she has no other options and it's just made her bitter. And I, 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 I do actually think, I don't buy that Anne would really invite her to like stay with them. She but, does! <laughs> but, but she does. And, and because there just hasn't been any, like any warmth or any, you know, like it just seems again, sort of Anne with the pixie dust, but yeah. Uh, but I do think that that scene is well acted and well written. And well lit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like, I, I like, I like the way that it's filmed. Um, but the, uh, in the books, that whole moment, that whole arc between Catherine and Anne, it's much more earned. Right. Because in the book, in the movie, in this, whatever it is, miniseries, yeah. um, they, they don't build towards that at all. Anne's not in the books. Anne's constantly inviting her to things, trying to include her into things, um, really trying to gain ground with Catherine. And Catherine is just like super resentful more than anything, not yeah. necessarily even resistant. She's like, it's really she doesn't like Anne. Yeah. She's- really bitter. Um, and that's because she's, she, when Anne came in, she flounced in with her string of pearls, which is, <laughs> it's her ring. Her ring's made out of pearls. And so she's, she's also like super jealous that Anne's in, in, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, in the books, all through the Summerside stuff is when Gilbert's in medical school and Anne's teaching at this school and they're engaged the whole time. And like 90% of the book is told through letters that Anne has written to Gilbert. Mm. Um, Anyway, and so she's just super jealous, basically, of everything about Anne, (laughs) everything. And she, she, you know, finally relents and goes to Green Gables over, I feel like it's Christmas, but it could be summer. Eh. Mm -hmm. Um, And while she's there, it's, it's Christmas. They go on like okay. a sleigh ride um, <laughs> and have like a talk in the winter air. Anyway, um, they, they, they really bond and she's able to find out about Anne's past as being an orphan and adopted and, and all of that stuff. And it's really, it's really interesting. I don't remember if in the movies or in the book, we talk about this. I know we do in the book. Well, it is sort um, of weird that they, says, they, they never have that conversation where Anne says, I know I was an orphan too. Like that, that is sort of strange, but I, I just liked the way, you know, she says that uh, hate has gotten to be a disease with me. And I, I, I thought that was, yeah. uh, well, I, I don't know if that's from the book or not, but uh, just that whole sort of speech about how like, and I, I can relate to that sort of when you, sometimes you get into a career or a situation that it's just, it feels like, it feels like you're stuck and you don't have any way out of it. And that's like the worst feeling ever. Like, especially, you know, you're unhappy, but you don't know how to, how to get out of it. And so I relate to that very much. I've experienced that in my life. Uh, yeah. where it's just like, well, you just keep going and you just keep being more and more unhappy because you don't know what to do. Like, 
Yeah. I think, I think, yeah, the whole Catherine um, arc and stuff, I, I like it in the books. I like it in the show, but it doesn't feel very earned in yeah. the show. But it, like you said, it is a good scene. But it's a, it's more earned in the books. Yeah, I agreed. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> so <clears throat> Anne returns home and Gilbert is sick. And Anne yes. has her moment of revelation, visits him, and gives him her book. Uh, do you like all of that? Ugh, it's so much better in the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when Anne has her book of revelation, she, um, it's Davy, by the way, who blurts out that Gilbert's dying. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you who don't know about the books, read them. Yeah, and the you'll books find are so good. Um, <laughs> and especially Anna the Island, I I I think I remember not being that in love with Anna Wendy Poplars, but uh, and, well, Anna Wendy Poplars is obviously it's a much slower paced book. It's a lot it's, of I mean it's it's all letters to Gilbert. Yeah, I was just but not say like, it's written in letters, epistolary. Yeah, but I really, I I didn't appreciate it as a child. <laughs> But as I've gotten older, the more I've been like, you know, this is actually really fun. Especially, yeah. I mean, even though she's engaged um, as like a, a single working gal, <laughs> um, it's kind of fun to see like what sort of stuff she gets involved in yeah. in her life where she's not going on dates and where she's not being pursued romantically. Like, True. I mean, she, she's, she's like, we should she's living like a life. Yeah, we should do like a book club or something like after, because <laughs> I haven't read a lot of these in so long. I mean, I did read so it. The last novels. one will be a book review. Yeah, the last, uh, I um I read Anna Green Gables just like a year or two ago, uh -huh. but I, I just haven't read any of the others in a long time. They're great. Everyone, we should read them every day. <laughs> Nothing else. Yeah. Uh, um. But so... Anyway, in the book, though, she she finds out from Davy, and she is like, um, Marilla's like free. Marilla gets like super nervous because all of the color drains out of Anne's face, and she's like worried for Anne that like Anne's gonna drop dead right then immediately mm -hmm. or whatever. She keeps she keeps it's told in the she said they say that Anne's face you know all the color drained out of Anne's face and then Marilla is like trying to calm her down and keeps saying like stop looking like that it's it's fun for it's I think it's a fun moment where like they don't just talk about her face how it's that way but in Marilla's actual dialogue you get the implication of Anne you know being being sick and distraught um, and then because everyone expects him to, her to be, you know, with Royal Gardner, I mean, she had broken up with Royal right before that, but, and he's, you know, belongs to Christine in the eyes of the world. She has no right, as it were, to go and see Gilbert. She's like, cause she's, she's not family. She's not his fiance she's just his friend and it's not appropriate at that time for her to just go over unannounced for for that kind of a visit um and so she has to spend the whole time that whole night when she has her where she, when she reads her book of revelation that she loves gilbert it's always been gilbert um and gilbert will die without knowing that she loves him and it's so it's amazing too because in the book she's also she's like he was never in love with christine like she realizes that yeah. because yeah. she realizes that just like there was never really anyone else for her there was never anyone else for him they are made for each other and she just spends that whole night like wrestling with that worry praying and then in the morning there's the little french boy <laughs> jerry butte <laughs> who's a little boy in the book he's like a little french servant um who actually works next door 
to Gilbert's house. Anyway, <laughs> and he tells her that, and she says, like, the rest of her life, she thought he was, <coughs> he was a homely, sorry, I'm sneezing, <coughs> uh, a homely boy, and like, whatever, but from that day on, there was never anyone that she thought was, like, more beautiful and the most wonderful person, because he brings the news that Gilbert's made the turn and is going to be okay. And it's, I just really like that whole thing, because it's not something that she tells anyone else. She doesn't go and confess it to Gilbert on his deathbed. She has that revelation for herself, to herself, and then the next day has to say, okay, this is what it is. Now what am I going to do about it? And I really like that rather than, because, I mean, it's really easy to be like, oh, you're dying, I love you, and go to their deathbed and then be like, ah, oh, perfect. Like a deathbed confession, right? Except for right. the other way around. But in the books, I like that she has to try and figure out how to fix it. Um, and in the books, I mean, there's still a little bit of time between that day and Gilbert getting better and recovering and them having their their moment yeah. of being able to finally be like you me love <laughs> like I just like it it's everything's better in the book but yeah. um it's still fine aside from the stupid book thing yeah I mean I I do think that she does a pretty good job Megan follows I think she in those scenes I think she's yeah she's good no yeah Megan follows is does a great job even mm -hmm. with the garbage Morgan Harris stuff you can see she's trying as hard as she can to make us believe it yeah I don't I don't believe it right even for a second but she's trying real hard and she's doing a great job <laughs> Yeah, I ag agreed. I, I agree. I, I, I get, I have to admit, I, even with those differences, I do get kind of caught up in the ending. I, I, I'm kind of, no, it's, I mean, it's fine. I just am saying like, that it's better in the book for sure. <laughs> I, I, I remember that. I remember that it was better, but, but I, I, I do think it's, it's pretty effective. It is effective. Um, and I really they have good chemistry. I think that goes, that's a big part of it is that Jonathan Crombie and Megan Falls have such good chemistry together that can they we just say, can I just say Jonathan Crombie unconscious pale jaundice <laughs> is, has more charisma than Morgan Harris. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. So, so yeah, the, and then you do get the, the scene at the end, of course, when they're on the bridge and she says, you know, I don't want uh, diamond sunbursts and marble halls. I just want you. <laughs> and that is great. Uh, it it's is so great. Fun. And unsurprisingly, straight from the book. Of course. <laughs> and that was my favorite. I would read Anne of the Island like over and over and over again. Like, especially the, yeah, the proposal and everything like that. It was so... It was so good. So romantic. <laughs> it's so cute. Yeah. It's so great. And you're like, yay! Now you get to have children! <laughs> and they get to have adventures! And then you're like, wait, what? You have to go to war? <laughs> it's garbage. Yeah. It does get pretty exciting. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, all in all, it's a mixed bag. This one, I, I think that there are some, like I said, it's more the middle section that's the rough part. Uh, but there are moments, and even in that middle section, that work, and and uh, it's slickly made. Uh, it's uh, it's generally, mo I would say, I don't know, half the performances are, are really really good. Uh, and so I would still give it technically like a fresh, um, rating. I'd give it like a six out of 10 because I still think it's entertaining enough. It's, it's, <laughs> it's got enough good stuff that I, I, I wouldn't give it a rotten score. So I'd give it a six out of 10. I'm going to give it a four. That's right. I hate it. <laughs> 
Like that's pretty low for me. And I'm giving it a that's four fair. because I feel like maybe 40% of it's fun. And then the rest of it, I just wish I was fast forwarding. Yeah. I was sorely tempted. Like I got the remote in my hand and was like, ah, <laughs> oh, like went, nobody would know. Where's my integrity? Uh, I was like, Ugh. my podcasting integrity is on the line here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Asking you. <laughs> oh, that's it's funny. So funny. Oh boy. Yeah. I, it's fair. I, it, it was pretty disappointing. Uh, I have to admit on the rewatch uh, that uh, I hadn't seen it in a long time. And uh, cause it's not every day that you sit down and watch a, you know, three hour movie. Uh, so I hadn't seen well, it in a long time and it did it's not every day up. for me <laughs> <laughs> it didn't hold up that well uh which is too bad but oh well what are you gonna do so anyway uh, but like if I'm gonna dev- devote three hours I'm gonna quickly read the books instead <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so it will be really interesting so the new series just debuted today and yes. on Netflix. And uh, so we're going to talk about that uh, sometime this weekend, probably. We'll figure it out and we'll let you all know. And, uh, or maybe on Monday. Anyway, we'll talk about it soon. And that'll be fun. And we also, I think we'll talk about the, the movie from last year um, mm-hmm. sometime. And we'll try to fit it all in. And, uh, but yeah, so where can people find you? Um, wait, before we go... Oh. I have an in memoriam of the best parts from the book. Oh, so yes, yeah, sorry. Who, I almost forgot. So the people who have read the books will appreciate this, and the people who haven't will be like, what? And I'll say, <laughs> go find out by reading the books. Yes. <laughs> okay, so in memoriam, Mr. Harrison, his parrot, and his wife, in memoriam, <laughs> Dora and Davy, in memoriam, Miss Lavender, and Charlotta the Fourth. In memoriam, Paul Irving and all of the Avonlea scholars, Priscilla Grant, Hester Gray's Garden, The Blue Barn, Philippa Gordon, Alec and Alonzo and Preacher Joe, Aunt Jamesina, and all the cats at Patty's Place. I already said Anne's first proposal. Royal Gardener, who's worth reading about, even if he's kind of whatever. Not Gilbert, and Aunt Kate and Aunt Chatty, The Fate of Ruby Gillis, which is a really important scene from the books. Read it. (laughs) And then above all else, Rebecca Dew from Wendy Poplars. She's the best part of Wendy Poplars and makes the whole thing worth it. So thank you for insulting me. Rest in peace. (laughs) And by doing this, I saved like 30 minutes from the podcast because I didn't put that in when we were talking. <laughs> yeah, those, now you say all those things. I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, those are good <laughs> stuff. Like, it is, it is interesting that they thought that all of this melodrama, you know, with the Pringles and everything, that that was more interesting than all that stuff you just listed. Yeah, all that, and like, all that stuff I just listed, better, better than anything. Yeah. The best stuff in the world. Like, I can't understand how you would... Ad- Ugh, okay, I can't understand how someone would adapt Anne of the Island and not include the Ruby Gillis stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so... It's so beautiful and sad that I don't understand why you wouldn't include it if you're trying to get a more serious or whatever. Well, and would you generally say you're a purist to books, or would you say that you're that you're usually pretty flexible to adaptations? Um, I'm actually, you wouldn't believe this, but I'm actually pretty okay with adaptations um, as long as they follow the spirit of the book and, like, capture the essence of the characters, you know? So, like, I'm not going to be like, please make sure that you have everything correct, but, like... I feel like if you're going to make an adaptation, do it for, like, make changes, I should say. Do it for a reason. Like, uh, it just doesn't make sense to have nine different characters doing something that one character could reasonably do and not be crazy. Mm -hmm. Or do it um, so that 
I still recognize the character. Yeah. Well, and, and it just, like you said, it just sort of turns Anne into a fairy godmother instead of being like the fleshed out, really interesting character that she is, you know, that she's got this like magic pixie dust that's going to like make everybody that's sad happy and make everyone that's cranky pleasant and solve everyone's problems. Yeah. And I mean, and do you feel, I feel like Anne throughout the whole show mm -hmm. is a very static character. Yeah. Agreed. She, I don't think she grows at all. And I mean, she does have her book of revelation in the movie where she realizes that she loves Gilbert, but like she doesn't actually change. I don't think in the movie, she doesn't grow as a person. I don't feel, yeah. I, and I feel like that's definitely like one of the biggest things that's missing from the book. I mean, from the movies, is that you don't see Anne grow and mature to any real degree, like slightly, maybe at the very end. But, like, yeah, for the most part, she's just, she's just, I mean, you're like, well, she's just Anne. But she's not even just Anne. She's like, it's like, she, I don't know. Yeah. She suffers from more like Gilmore syndrome. And I don't, I don't even know. Whatever. But I'm great. I I'm did glad enjoy you did that. It at least forty percent. Hey, there you go. What are you gonna What are you gonna do? Uh, yeah, it was a disappointment on the rewatch. It wasn't as good as I remembered it, uh, but I still stick with my six out of ten. I, I I still think it's watchable. I don't know, just barely fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just barely. Will I fresh. watch it again in my life? Yeah. Will I probably go make some nachos during the whole second half? It's possible. See, six out of ten is my equivalent to like a C plus. It's like it's what I give <laughs> the movies that I, I think are just like like I gave the recent Beauty and the Beast C plus. You know, it's just like I don't I have lots of problems, but it's just like just barely good enough for me to say, okay. Uh but yeah, so it's uh, it's interesting. But Oh, well, what are you going to do? Oh, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> I know what you're going to do. You're going to go follow me on Twitter at Amber Bra Brainwaves. Yeah. Amber Brainwaves. I messed up. Not Amber Brainwaves. Not Waves of Bran. <laughs> waves of Brain. Um, and that's it. That's the only place. Yeah, that would be awesome. Please follow her there. And like I said, we will be reviewing the premiere for the new series uh, sometime in the next couple of days. So we'll let you know when that will happen. And uh, thanks so much for joining me. It was fun to talk about, uh, even if it wasn't, wasn't the greatest movie. It was fun to talk. Yes. Hey, and where can people find you? <laughs> they can find me at Smiling LDS Girl on all social media and at uh, 54 Disney Reviews on my blog. So uh, yeah, look for that. And uh, we just posted today a, uh, our podcast on, with me and my friend Jonathan on Doctor Who. So you want to check that out too. So, okay. and tomorrow I'm actually really excited. I'm doing a little podcast with my friend David, where we are talking about, we're kind of going to try to dive in, solve all the problems in the world and find out why so many blockbusters are so disappointing. Cause I'm so frustrated cause I've just had one after another, after another that has kind of let me down. So we're going to talk about it and it's going to be really good. So all right. that'll be tomorrow. So okay. thanks again, and we will talk soon. Okay.